Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys had a fantastic week so far and that you've been diving into Home Assistant a bit more. Uh, today is going to be a bit different than usual. I know usually what I do is I go ahead and show you each and every step as I set it up as well. This one is going to be a bit different as I did some work um, in setting up the doorbell and also I assume in this video as well that you have already set up um, a multi-sensor previously or you have seen my video in creating a multi-sensor as it's going to be quite related to that. So in this one I'm just going to cover on how to add your ESP into an existing wireless doorbell sensor. So creating a smart doorbell out of a cheap wireless doorbell and then adding in some sensors to that as well which is going to be just copying the existing information we already have in our kitchen sensor and then just adding it to the doorbell sensor so with that said let's quickly go ahead and jump in and take a look at our home assistant there we go guys so back into home assistant and as you can see everything is still exactly the same um, i haven't really added or mess around with a lot of things in here um, I do tend to just create a new tab and play with some stuff that we have in here so I can set up future videos for you guys but everything is essentially exactly the same as we've set it up previously the only difference that we do have in here is if we go to ESP home because that's what we'll be using to go ahead and create that smart doorbell with the custom sensor built in now um, it looks like this may be go ahead and refresh there we go so as you can see I have one new item in here which is called ring which is just a name I gave it just to have something in here for now I will go ahead and replace that with the kitchen multi-sensor um, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this afterwards this was just as I was setting up and testing everything to make sure everything is working fine now what you need to look for when you are going to do this if it is a wireless doorbell not a wired one you're going to want one that has a built-in LED so as soon as you press that wireless doorbell button on the doorbell itself the units that the unit that is inside it has that LED that flickers and that's going to be the thing that we are going to tap into so as soon as that LED flickers it gives us a button press uh, within the ESP so it just bridges that connection between the ground and the positive uh, between the ground and the pin that we selected sorry so it'll go ahead and bridge those two and register as a button press and then we pull that into home assistant and we can go ahead and use that so i'll quickly go ahead and take a look and see if i have some photos that i've taken also so i can just show you guys real quick so there we go this is how this doorbell looks now it is quite an old one so you can go ahead uh, you can see it has some usage to it already um, this is the exact doorbell that i'm using as you can see it does have that blue little button on there and also has a lot of options for custom tones and all that um, I won't go into depth into that but just keep in mind depending on the type of doorbell and I think I'll go ahead and look for you guys to see if I can find one that, that should work but depending on the specific tone that you have set would also determine the amount of times that LED is going to flash and that'll greatly impact uh, the notifications that get sent through and I'll show you guys as I've set it up in Home Assistant as we set up that sensor what it does as soon as that thing starts to flash but that's just uh, how the doorbell looks and then uh, let's see if I have a couple of other ones in here that's just me when I opened it up what I did in here was um, it uses three uh, AA batteries that should be okay to go ahead and power it from a 5 volt USB socket as well. So I just removed all the pins in here. We're not going to use that. I'm going to go ahead and power it directly uh, from that USB socket that we'll be go ahead and plug in. So I made a small hole. I just use a soldering iron. Keep in mind, don't use a new soldering iron. Just use some cheap uh, old one that you have laying around. I just made a hole in there or just use a drill. So I have a way of inputting that wire, the power wire to the ESP and to the doorbell in here. So I just cut these terminals and use all those wires. It's going to be your positive and negative wires. So that's this one. Uh, then I also have another one, I think, in here, which is just showing you the ball that it 
the board that it used. All the information is actually marked on the board. So we have our ground and our power pins are all listed on the board. However, I ended up not using that. What I did do was on the LED itself, you'll see right there is that red wire. So this is the positive lead that's coming in right here to power the LED and then the ground wire comes in here. So all I did was I just went ahead and soldered a wire on here on the ground pin of the LED and that's going to go to our ears. So all you basically do to make this a smart doorbell is you cut off the wires that goes to the battery connections, take that and power it from a normal USB socket. So connect that to our ESP as well as to the power for the doorbell. And then once we, we did that, we go ahead and connect the uh, DuPont connector, so just a normal one that can plug into our ESP, onto the ground wire of our LED. So we're only going to use the ground of the LED to the ESP because the power is already providing the ground pin to both the doorbell and the ESP. There we go. So let's go ahead and edit this real quick. And uh, let's just have that load up real quick. So I just called it ring. Um, I'm going to replace this and delete this one and just add it to my multi sensor. But what we did, we're just going to create a basic button. And the way it works is remember on the LEDs ground pin. So the ground wire of the LED or the ground of the LED, we connect that to pin number D3 and right here you'll see we have our binary sensor it's GPIO and then pin number D3 the name I just called it ring you can go ahead and call it doorbell and then device class class I used sound is just for the icon that it's going to use and that's it I'll have this code down below in the description however we may need to modify this because the LED flashes multiple times so we need to go ahead and fix that in this code as well and I'm just gonna go ahead and bring up the camera for the doorbell there we go guys so right here um, you'll see it is the doorbell itself I added in a PAR sensor and a temperature sensor all the way to the top now it's going to look a bit messy, but it's fine. Um, you won't notice it if it's up top. So, and then this is just for an example, I connected the door sensor. Nothing's in the code right now. Um, I'll show you in a minute how to do that, but I'll just show you uh, in the back in here. If I open it up, the ESP is right in here with a bunch of wires coming in and out. So this is going to be the power wire that goes in. So my positive and negative. So what I did right here is I connected the positive and negative to the actual doorbells, positive and negative, and then also uh, bridge that to the ESP. So I connected that to the VIN and the ground pin of the ESP itself. And then I connected all my other sensors, including the, from the LED that's in here, I connected the ground of this LED to a DuPont connection that comes in and connects to pin number D3. Now I know this looks quite messy, but that's the only thing I needed to cram this in here. And it's going to be hard and it'll depend on the specific doorbell that you're using. If you want to cram everything in there, you can go ahead and try and cram that in there. But I got everything in there, so everything's working. I'm just gonna close that up real quick. And show you guys, this is the door sensor. It's not gonna look like this. I'll go ahead and connect it correctly. Um, I just added it in here for an example. Now I'm going to close this right here because I don't want it to be that loud. It's like 4 a.m. So if I press this button, now you can look at the code or the log file. As soon as I press the button right here, it goes ahead and sends a ton of messages and we just want them to go ahead and send once and not so many messages we just want to know when a single time it's pressed because that's going to screw with our automations in the future so let's quickly go back up top and take a look at that to see if we can go ahead and fix that so we're back in here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and stop this log and then what we need to do is we need to go ahead and edit this code so right here on the ring uh, we need to go ahead and filter out some of those messages in the log itself um, it is causing some uh, some 
issues. So we need to go ahead and add a filter in here. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter and I'm going to go um, right here and hit paste for the filters. Now, so what this is going to do is um, it's going to add a delay. And as you can see, this is a, a one second delay and that's all we need depending on the type of tone that you use and the amount of times that that LED flashes, which is going to go ahead and add a delay on there. And mine I worked out is about um, one second delay and that should stop that message from coming on, off, on, off, on, off the whole time to just sending two messages, changing the state from on back to off again. And that's exactly what we need. Um, you can go ahead and change this time to the specific amount of time that you need so if you see still a lot of messages comes up you can go ahead and change the delay on here and this is the code that i'll have listed right in the description for you guys there we go so that went ahead and uploaded so let's go ahead and show the logs now so once that loads all i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to go ahead and press the button for the doorbell and we should see it only send that message once for on and then again for off or off or on depending on the way it is um, registering there we go so all i'm gonna go ahead and do is press the button for the doorbell and as you can see it sent the state off and then it's gonna go ahead and send the state back to on and that's all we need to go ahead and add that to our home assistant as an input and then set up automations according to the states of this button. So as soon as the state change from off to on, we can go ahead and set up an automation for that. And that's basically it on connecting up a wireless doorbell. As long as you have a LED in there, you should be able to go ahead and get it listed within home assistant. So now that we have that set up, um, now, I know that there is a lot of ways and you guys can probably do it better. I struggled a bit getting all those sensors in there, but I just cut a few holes, placed some of the sensors in there or the temperature sensor I wanted outside of the casing. So I had that listed outside the same with the PR sensor. I just made a hole in the front of the case and uh, crammed in that sensor and just connected it all. A few tips I may have for you guys is when setting everything up, make sure you do have your wires labeled because you will get confused. If you don't label your wires and you get stuck somewhere and you need to open it up, remember I sealed mine. I just used some hot glue to seal around the edges to make sure that it sits very tightly in there. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and add the code in for the sensors. Now, this assumes that you guys did watch the multi-sensor video because that's where I did go ahead and set up everything and connected it. It's exactly the same process. We just connect everything to the ESP, add a code into the ring one, and then we're good to go. So all I'm going to do is I already have the code listed in here with the GPIO pins. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that in here. So I'm just going to say stop edit the doorbell config there we go and then i'm gonna go ahead and add in the rest of the sensors right here right here i just went ahead and added in the door sensor it's also just a gpio which is also basically just a connection exactly the same as this one all we did was we just added a filter in there for the time and then the PIR is going to be the motion sensor, which is just a class for the motion sensor. And then also the DHT is an actual sensor. So I added that in as a sensor. We already have the uh, binary sensor. So I just added in the additional two, two platforms and GPIO in there. And then because this is the only sense, actual sensor, I went ahead and added in sensor and just added in the GPU the DHT11 in here. And that is everything that's also listed in the additional the other video of mine for setting up a multi-sensor so if you guys don't know what's going on in here you can go ahead and watch that video and it'll explain everything on there so once we have that we can go ahead and save and upload that and we'll take a look after that's up and running there we go guys so that code went ahead and uploaded so i'm just doing the log and as you can see the pir sensor is definitely working 
Um, so if I go ahead and open up the door, that should also work. There we go. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that. Now it is constantly triggering the PIR, but you can also see it is showing the temperature right here. Uh, so that's all I did. I just added our existing sensors from our multi sensor into the case of the doorbell itself and then just connected the ground pin of the LED itself to an additional pin on the ESP. That's all that is to it. I know it may look complicated, but it's fairly simple. I'm just going to go ahead and press this one more time. I'm just need, going to go ahead and tr try and cover this because it is quite loud. And as you can see, everything is working like it should. And that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope there was something in there. I know it, it it's not one of my greatest works of art, but hopefully there is some information and you would be able to go ahead and create your own wireless custom doorbell using an existing cheap doorbell that you have laying around. Now, if you do have a normal doorbell button that is wired you can do exactly the same um, using the first code before I added in that filter and just cut that wire that comes in from your button on the doorbell's end and just in connecting that to the ESP ground pin and then pin D3 or the pin that you've specified. And that's all. As soon as someone presses the button, it'll go ahead and create that bridge and do exactly the same that we just did with the wireless one using the LED instead. But that's going to be it. In the next video, I'll go ahead and show you guys how to set up a automation for the button when it's pressed to send yourself a notification. And we can go ahead and take a look at that. So guys, if you do get stuck, I know there's a lot of information in here and it may be a bit confusing. I'm sorry if it is, um, but just keep going at it and I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. Um, it's not that hard really. And I'll see you guys in the next one.